Hey everybody, this video is going to be describing the flat earth cosmology here. The sun makes an analemma in the annual sky and in the daily sky. What this means is that the sun does a figure eight pattern in the day and annually as well. The sun is making a large figure eight pattern per year. Okay, this is where you'll have daytime, this is where you'll have nighttime, this is where you'll have spring and summer, this is where you'll have fall and winter. This is where you'll have, on an annual basis, you'll have June 21st, summer solstice, most day and a little bit of night. Down here, as a reflection of the summertime, you'll have winter. December 21st, winter solstice, the most night and not much day, the longest night, coldest time of the year. Right here in the middle, where everything is equal, along the equator, you have March 21st and June 21st, or excuse me, September 21st. The vernal and autumnal equinox. <clears throat> a day of equal day and night, equal night and day. Okay, this is the center of the flat earth plane. There's actually a line here. Okay, separating the northern and southern hemisphere just like your brain, is separated. You have the left and right sides of your brain separated into hemispheres. The left hemisphere of your brain, the right hemisphere of your brain. Everything's a reflection. Also, on a daily basis, this is the sunrise. This is midday, high noon. This is sunset. This, the moon is a reflection of the sun as day, or nighttime is a reflection of the day. Winter and fall are a reflection of spring and summer, respectively. So the moon rises, and then you have midnight, you have the rest of the night. So you have 180 degrees here, and 180 degrees here. Because the flat earth plane is a clock and a compass, okay? So let's talk about the compass first. The compass points north, south, east, and west. A compass rose with eight points. These are the degrees. There's 100, or there's 360 degrees on the compass, okay? You have 90, this makes a 90 degree angle. You have another 90, this makes a 90 degree angle. This whole half is 180 degrees, meaning that here's 90 degrees, here's 90 degrees, the four corners of the earth, and here's another 180. 180 plus 180, a full 360 degrees. So when they say, go three degrees nautical left, or whatever, you know that you, you point your compass to north, but you're actually going five degrees west, or 23 degrees south. It ties, it ties into the longitude and latitude of the ley lines of the earth. So that's how they've mathematically used the earth to make this compass. The earth has 360 degrees. Therefore, they can mathematically figure out where to go through the high seas because they can use the mathematical degrees of the planet. On a clock, it's the same exact thing. 60 degrees of separation. So again, you have, you know, from 12 to 3, that's a quarter of the day. From 3 to 6, another quarter of the day. From 6 to 9, and from 9 to 12, another quarter of the day. So, you have 90 degrees here, 90 minutes. You have 90 degrees here, 90 minutes. That's on a, on a different scale, of course. But seconds are degrees. So you can, I can tell you to meet me at 12, 35 and 33 degrees 33 seconds and you'll get to the exact point right here which would be this point so you can meet me here at this time and that's how they used to do shit it's key to understand that the earth is flat there's a center hole the earth or the, excuse me the sun rises and what goes this way it rises in the east and sets in the west we live on Pangaea then the moon rises but it's a reflection of the sun, so the sun's really completing its analemma. Okay? Again, you have the highest, the most high point in the sun sky, and you have midnight. Okay? Midday, midnight, high noon, high moon at midnight. The flat earth plane is in the center. Okay? 180 degrees here, 180 degrees here. Needed a sundial to tell the time, and needed a moon dial to tell the time. And you could track the stars in the middle. This is why the Egyptians were infatuated with the Ankh. Two Ankhs give you the flat earth cosmology. This is why Tesla created his Tesla coil to look like an Ankh because he would understand that one day we would align the two. 
the AC and the DC, if you will. The dielectric current will come together. The electric, the magnetic, electromagnetic sphere that creates the toroidal field. And I've showed you before, you have the three, you have the six, and you have the nine. They all combine to make the eight. Six ether beam and nine ether beam must combine to unite and you become one with God. Listen, you got a flat earth plane. There's a dome above and a dome below. And the sun makes an analemma. A better way to draw it would be the sun makes an analemma on the flat earth plane of which there's a dome above and a dome below. I promise you, bro. 369. It is absolutely paramount to understand that the Son of God rises from the tomb. Okay? You feeling me? There's there's three days lost in this tomb. When the sun turns around, it reaches the lowest point, it has to turn around. It loses 2.5 days. Okay? As on a reflective basis, when the when the sun turns around here, it also spends 2.5 days. Okay? Or they call it three days. So this three days and this three days, plus the three days in here, the three, the six, the nine. It's all electromagnetic energy. When the Bible says that the Son of Man will set into the heart of the earth for three days, this is what it's talking about. It's talking about the Son of God dying on the cross of the Zodiac. Look into the cross of the Zodiac. The sun transforms itself right, right there. That's what the crucifixion means. To be crucified is to, to go through a great transformation. Jesus died on the cross and the Christ was born again from the tomb in three days. And the Bible tells us the Son of Man will set into the heart of the earth for three days. These are the three days in the belly of the whale. These are the three days that Jesus was in the tomb. I assure you, everything is connected. The yin and yang is showing you the flat earth plane. You have the sun and the moon. It's dark here while it's light here. You have north, south, east, and west, just like you have 12 p.m. here. You have 12 a.m. here. On a 24-hour dial, you have 360 degrees, 180 degrees of light, 180 degrees of darkness. You spend six months, spring and summer, six months, fall and winter. You spend 12 hours in a day, 12 hours in a night during the equinox. Everything's connected. All right. So what does it mean to be swallowed by the bad whale and spat out by the good whale? Okay, we're in the dueling age of the fish, the Pisces dueling fish. <clears throat> so you have one whale, it's a six, and you have another whale, it's a nine. They come together to be one, and they have a change of heart, and they spit you back out. So one whale is bad. One whale is good. One whale swallowed you up, one whale spat you back out. As the two of them combined, you're in the belly of the whale as we speak. And here's the Jesus fish. Two fish, dueling fish, the age of Pisces. But the two must unite to be one. The eight unwinds to be the zero. In the beginning of time, everything was perfect, and we were one with God. We were we were connected to God, and then we went through the seven layers of hell. Lastly, we ended up on the eighth layer, the infinite layer. The eight unwinds to be the zero again, as it was in the beginning. So shall it be in the end. This is the alpha, and the omega. There was no government in the beginning. We were with God. God was our government, and there will be no government in the end. Because God will once again be our government. As it was in the beginning, so shall it be in the end. Ashe. Shalom, shalom.